Welcome back, fellow armchair generals, to Strategic Command World War I. This is the East Front <clears throat> first campaign series that we're watching, and we have just, as one um, viewer put it well, we've just been a victim of Slick Nicky, I think is what he said, in his, he walked out of the peace conference giving us only Poland. Um, I am still disappointed in this. Yes, I know I didn't send Lenin because I, there was, I, I would say two main reasons I didn't send Lenin um, to Russia. One was, this was an East Front first campaign. This was meant to not be a, I am desperate trying to hold off the the Russians, I keep wanting to say the Soviets, but the Russians, sometimes you hear me pause because I have to think, what am I going to call something? But um, desperately holding off. Well, here's this um, revolutionary guy. Maybe he can stir up some trouble to weaken them a bit. I didn't feel I needed that. So my primary was, is we're marching my armies east. I am doing this by conquest. Within this war game, what does that look like? I know this war game is not an accurate simulation of history but it is some version of an approximation of that whether you consider it good bad somewhere in the middle whatever but it is that and so i wanted to see if i could defeat them with my german and austro-hungarian armies that was the main reason as opposed to not desperation second i sent I didn't do it for ideological reasons. We didn't want to spread communism. We wanted to defeat um, the Romanov Empire, take a big chunk of land, and um, leave the Romanov Empire in existence afterwards. We didn't want to tear it down. Okay, that was my goal. Now, I thought, instead of having, you know partisan outbreaks or revolutions and no we did see a you know a um, Finland appear and instead of revolutions appearing and instead of shall we say additional as opposed to just simply um, loss of morale for units because of defeats in battle but additional losses of morale uh, because of the revolution breaking out and revolutionary sentiment in the army, I wanted to do it through, if you will, brute military force. And so I was looking at thinking that I could um, achieve in many ways, at least from the German perspective of territorial gain and the possibility of demanding um, buffer states, if you will, maybe, I'm thinking maybe the Baltic states or something, or whether I was going to take that territory, um, I was going to be able to achieve, in that sense, similar um, outcome uh, without the revolution. Now, and some of the viewers, and this is, we're going to get into playing the game here. We're going to continue. Thank you very loud. I think that's a motorcycle. Yeah, very loud. Want to be Harley, I think. Um, You know, said that, hey, no, this is maybe a reasonable outcome. And I'm not going to disagree with that this is a possible reasonable outcome of a peace agreement between these two um, empires. I'm not. But what I'm disagreeing with is me being forced into this outcome. I know strategic command is not the diplomacy game. It is not even trying to do the diplomacy on a level of any, either the two Hearts of Iron games I'm, pl I you play, three and four. And I'm not saying it should, but it should have, instead of having a um, forced peace treaty on me, I, I which I object to, outside of utter, complete surrender, I object to the idea for any of these nations for not having um, a choice on my end to say continue the war what 
I would have liked to see, and I would love to have um, my good friends at Fury Software go in and, and deal with this, and I'm going to post this up and um, have them look at this and hopefully get a reply out of them. They're a nice bunch of guys. Um, is to have an event come up and go, you know, Nicholas, Tsar Nicholas is offering you this territory and um, this territory to um, Turkey. Nothing new over here for you Austrians, but it's offering this for peace at this time. If not, you will see Russians dig in and get a morale, you know, morale boost or something of 10% to fight on. And so I would have a choice to accept this or not. And then say, once I actually take Petrograd, or I don't know if it needs to be an and, but or Moscow or something, because Moscow still is a although not the political capital is still, I would say, a, an economic and industrial capital, if you will. Um, take Moscow, then I would be able to have a greater set of demands upon Russia. Um, Hmm. Is there a way to look at um what uh, what generates? I know at the beginning of the turn there is where we get our MPPs from. Thing. Something like um because there's like food baskets out here. Some sort of MPP penalty per turn from Russia's. You know maybe a pet. You know which you know would represent um resources food and um you know various mineral resources and whatnot coming out of russia so that you would as you know post-war granting that that happens and if you know have some of these choices to have some options depending upon if you will victory levels that um you could have and i could definitely see the idea that none of them would be complete and total um capitulation of all of russia that just may never be on the option table it just either they stay at war with partisans springing up everywhere or you settle for some sort of reasonable, um, you know, which could be the Ukraine, you know, it could be sort of the brest type treaty type situation, you know, it could be, you know, pretty bad, but still, you know, Petrograd, Moscow, a lot of this core area, you know, Smolensk or something, you know, this core area of Russia, and obviously they would keep going to the east, still remain in existence. I would very, very much like that to be an option with the settling of the war in the east that to be an option okay like i say we're going to go on now we're going to be a bit tricky here well i guess we can start out here we have um some british and again which i know i think some of you and i hope you you did like my use of the Stahlhelm graphic that I had. We are now seeing um, French and helmets, British. Um, they're at level one as well. Um, these guys are level one, but we're going to attack there and be. And so where we are now have level one. So we in most of these places, if we start attacking, not that we won't do any damage. We're going to sometimes maybe not. We're not going to have very favorable outcomes. But right here looks like there's a good opportunity. These aren't going to be great op outcomes, but we no longer, at least for the time being, no longer need to build new cores for Germany. We have a lot of cores. Let's see. Um, we'll hit you first. Okay. And then we're going to hit 
you and shatter. Okay, well, we shattered that for miminal um, losses. And we're going to get the stall helms into the front line. And here, is there any reasonable? No, not even, I'm sure, with trying to artillery in a option. Okay, um, okay, so those are stall homes. These are not yet. Um, we have them up there, they can't quite get that far down. Uh, that's the most endangered one so let's move you back you retreat to there you come here and can yes you can swap out no they can't get back in okay well oh well Now these guys, because we did the swap maneuver, we can re or upgrade, and well, no, they, oh, they're on the front line, that's why they can't, that's, they're and not just on the front line, but, but they're in contact, and that does make sense. Lacking the ability there. Okay, they attack so they don't get to. Um, these guys get to max reinforce. Okay, so now we have all except for here, but they're in Mets, so they're fine, and you're only going to really be able to get a couple of units. To do good assaults on them so they'll, they'll be fine defending there for this turn we will be of course bringing up higher levels of troops soon there we go. Get a little closer to be able to get that now down here um hmm. these guys we will upgrade now down here because they moved in um, I think via SR the last turn they are not well dug in at all and yes I figured it would be painful Good, there goes a whole we'll swap you. Swap swap, not swamp. Okay, and here we will swap them here, which will allow us what will mountain core oh there we are. So we can see here from that to that. Oh cool. Glad that a few changes. And these guys will also come to the stall home. Oh. So now we will have some German reinforcements for the front line that will be well. And now with all these, I'm not well. We do have to come down and deal with Greece. Um, hmm. Yeah, it looks like we can get this. Okay, now I don't know whether our other um, forces down here will, um, or other territories will capitulate to us or whether we'll have to invade them. Now I have talked about, and I was asked, I'm going to again, we are keeping these guys at least temporarily alive. I don't know how long they'll live, especially without holding out some of these other places. But, um, and, and 
in the long run, it really doesn't matter. It's helpful to us to have these here. So my next major goal is to take out Egypt. And I know several of you have commented on the attrition levels out here being a difficulty in pushing your way past that. And I will um, wholeheartedly agree with um, you that it can be... Can you swap? Yes, and I'd rather have you on the front lines. Um, agree that this is a problem, but what I'm thinking of is pretend we're going to pretend that we're British, and we're going to do naval landings. And so that is meant to be, and we're going to get you off the line just in case right now. And we're going to get you to our port over here, now that we can... Um, support you out further in the Adriatic and so we're gonna see about taking out Egypt by landing somewhere I don't know Alexandria here or hmm, maybe even back into a brook once they sort of you know deal with these or something I don't know and take out Egypt, because our goal is Paris, but um, I'm a Sun Suian. I don't know if that's correct. Sounds sort of weird. But believe in the indirect approach is best. So, and even if you look at the Schlieffen plan, instead of the direct approach through, you know, bashing your head through the forts, they wanted to come, and not even sort of a modified, um, well, there's, the fall gelb, I mean, we can look at it, and we often, and I definitely in titles and whatnot, generally just use that to reference that that's my invasion through Belgium into um, uh, France, and not necessarily operationally the the fall gelb plan. Um, but, you know, because the core of the sort of the fall gelb was an attack into the Netherlands, attack into um, Belgium, making it reasonably appear that that was their goals and objectives to get them to send, if not all of their, which they did for the um, the French, send all of their reserves into, um, you know, to block that, and then with the main blow coming to cut them off. That's at its core, you know, to, to cut off the two armies, not just simply um, attack around the Maginot line. They, before Monstein's basic, and there are, I'm sure, other people, I don't have names in my head right now, other people that, and whether I know them or not, contributed to the plan. Um, there was a sort of, if you will, modified um, Schlieffen plan that was definitely used motorized forces that was going to, you know, come around through Belgium and hook in towards Paris that didn't have, to the best of my knowledge, because it's been years since I've looked at it, and even how much detail and whatever books I read, I don't know. Um, but it didn't have the sort of initial attacks, expect French reaction, and then after that have the uh, attacks through here. It was sort of an all at once, more mechanized Schlieffen, shall we say. But even the Schlieffen really wanted you to keep this is the German right wing. German the right wing heavily, and we will go back and look more at the other series. The right wing to have come over and around Paris instead of, you know, avoid, you know, the because there was no Maginot line, but there were forts and whatnot that were built after the Franco-Prussian War that they wanted to, you know, you know, instead of coming through Belgium and straight towards Paris, it was a hook around, uh, a pivot around, because they expected the large French armies to sort of congregate here as well as down here, and sort of swing around all of them. And that, so that is an indirect approach, even um, with that. And we could theoretically try that at this point, now that we have all of this to work with, but we're not. We're going after Egypt and Libya, and 
we're going to see about making landing somewhere in Italy. Because if we land down here, say, they very well may be able to come in and bottle up units, but those units are going to be bottling up forces down here, which are going to weaken this line, so we'll be able to push a bit more on this line, which will mean that this line gets more weakened, which then means we'll be able to, whether we take out Sardinia and Corsica, or whether we, um, you know, take out any of these other places, or land in Marseille, I have no idea, you know, we may, you know, if the past being prologue to the future or representing what the future is, we may take, um, oh, I don't know, Tunis, and the game will say, you've just defeated the Fran French and you've given them half of Germany because, yes, that's how we figure this will end. Yeah, um, you can, I'm still a bit salty over the this this situation here so yeah um so we need to prepare for all of these operations these are reconnaissance bombers and these are also reconnaissance bombers good uh we would like to take out roads let's get you down to here Keep doing the war plan thing of right and left clicking for different options. Now over here, um, well, I think we're gonna because uh, I don't know that you're on a. Um, oh, you're on a railway. What does it cost to operate you? Twenty-five MPP. No, I'm too cheap right now. We'll get you to. Here, oh, yeah, I do that. Wish you guys would have used the same. You're, you'll take forever to go there, so no matter how much it's going to cost, we're going to. I guess get you to here. Then we're going to have to pull our core headquarters back a little bit. Okay, you can stay right where you're at. I don't know if there's any sort of um, needing to, and I'll be very salty if there is any sort of, oh, you didn't garrison the... the Russian border, so they've now... Um, join the war. Okay, are there any? Oh, there are some cores left, so down here in Serbia. So we're going to use all these sort of Austrian garrisons. Um, to either garrison um, Serbia or other occupied zones or simply um, watch the Romanian well you should have moved to there oh well I said the shortest movement not exactly sure why I I can think of some reasons, just because if you're not talking about so much moving the HQ, you know, the as the sort of, you know, where the... The general lives and communicates, that would be easy. But if you're talking about all of the, oh, supplies and other stuff which would be potentially huge supply dumps mm. 
Yeah, we'll do that. We'll get you down to... Here I guess... Oh, did that wrong, didn't I? Oh, mm. Hopefully that didn't ruin the... Oh, did we pay that? Not... No, I didn't want, I don't want to do that. Okay. And these are the... Oh, more recon bombers. Okay, yeah, well... We'll get you guys over to here. My other pet peeve is... Stacking limitations. You should be able to freaking stack. I would be able, I would say you should be able to stack the artillery. Maybe. But definitely the air units on top of ground units. That is for me a these guys will also take forever to get anywhere. So let's hmm, thinking of using these in some of our Oh, this is... I thought we needed to have... Hmm. Hmm. Do we want to have some ability to bash through here? I don't know that it's going to be enough, so let's go to a port, or near a port, at least. Uh... I guess down here. Now we could, yeah, use some more artillery out here as well. Because even though we are not planning on bashing our head towards Paris, we are planning to continue to do um, attritional attacks along this line to keep weakening them, weakening them, weakening them. Okay, you guys. Not sure how much I'm going to be able to use you in the near future. Well, maybe down here we'll have use for cavalry. Trying to keep most of these units on the front line or, in, or on rail lines. Okay, so they'll have two artillery and one long range guns there. Sort of don't want to be able to shoot three X's. I don't know. Um, yeah. So we well, let's let's upgrade now. Picture difference. Okay. Cool. Yes, at some point all these guys will. Well, I'll just say that then I think, well, most of these guys will need to be upgraded. Um, I don't know if there's any sort of garrison need. What we will be doing is sending some of these garrison forces um, or detachments to sort of sit around some of these ports just in case as well as potentially um, occupying
um, places like Serbia and whatnot. Okay, I've been advised, and I'm going to take the advice. We're going to try to move out of here. We're just to our damnedest to, well, let's get you to come up to here. Um, I'm anticipating finding a dreadnought contact, yes. Okay, well. Um, we don't care really that much about that dreadnought, so we're going to just see if we can You're going to slip back out away from there. Get off these just to keep the U.S. out of the war more, longer, forever. They don't need to come into our war. We've, we're moving these away from here, and I think we will continue to do so. Um, part of the reason I am just flying these around is... Um, Yeah, that's cheap enough. We're going to come down here, get ready to make sure we don't have partisans showing up and going, hey, yeah, they get to, like, you know, take over bits and pieces. Is that we're going to, it's going to take a while before we're ready to, um, well, we can't even go into there, those ports that we took earlier. Okay, um, you guys come over here. Looking for really damaged units because we're going to see about repairing some of the high seas fleet. Don't know how how useful it's going to be, so I'm not going to dump huge amounts into it. Um, definitely, when we get a chance, um, do some of that so we can lay some more sea mines out there as a distraction. But what we're going to do, whether whether we send in. German um, MPP or um, to Austria or whatnot we're going to and as well as Turkey I guess we're gonna get their fleet fully reinforced that's for sure and maybe if we can upgrade it a bit again I'll be stupid crazy pissed if somehow the um, Russians get to go to war with me or whatnot diplomacy Romania at 62 well if they I'm gonna have some cavalry and other units on the front here if they come to war and there may be even uh, reasons to declare war on them but since they're sort of Ru uh, Russian Entente supporters, Russia is out of the Entente, so that shouldn't happen. Belgium, we've been keeping a couple of cores ready just in case they come in. Okay, Denmark, Netherlands, Sweden, so we've sort of maxed out our diplomacy for a while. Yeah, maybe we we're going to, I don't know, stop some of that after a while. We'll be, we're going to keep them out. We may shut that down. Okay. Now, hmm, yes. Okay, well, now here, um... I guess I'm going to keep just in case there's some sort of partisan breakout a few detachments there don't know that we need him here so let's move him to here we want to get them to 
a railroad junction or well no let's see if we can undo that we're gonna walk him they get to march down here to make sure that they're you find these guys magically appeared from up here maybe okay um make sure that we deal with all of our fun time uh, situations down here yeah that ain't much it ain't much but it's some that's good it's much better supply Uh, hopefully we can find better uses for the mountain cores. And for the command cores, oh, a bunch of forces get put down to here. Well, Yeah, I know I could rail them along, but make sure we get some of that and see about invading Cyprus. Turkey likes Cyprus. They own half of Cyprus right now by invading it and creating a puppet state. Okay, you move to a port officially. And so do you. We just moved to that port. Well, we'll move to a port another time. To get that navy up. Okay, now. Research. Yes, we're on Austria. That's where we wanted to be. Um, infantry weapons we're doing. Infantry warfare we're currently doing. Yeah, I think because of our Mediterranean strategy, we will want to do this. And, well, advanced subs is relatively cheap, so we're already at artillery level weapons one. So, yeah, let's take um, the time now. Partially, we just didn't. Well, partially it was the, you know, the resources, not major, but some resources these guys moved. Partially it was just, hey, we, you know, needed to use them today. And Well, anti-submarine warfare might look good as well. Just again out in the Mediterranean. And aerial warfare. That will. Yes. Okay, close. Now, any of the units here that we want to max out. These guys will probably need to move because we could use those as Marines and German here. We, I just, oh, um, upgrade or reinforce. We'll upgrade first. Let's see what the change is. Oh, they still have the naval sort of, not a bib in the back. We forget what it's called. But now with the stall helm, yeah. Just because, I mean, I just left them there because they were there and I eh, didn't, you know, want some sort of reserves in case they... Invaded and hadn't been planning any major naval invasions. Okay, so that is that. Now 
they're just holding sort of the north of Romania. Well, we're going to keep some of these smaller forces around. Yeah, that guard in Constantinople is a good idea. We'll see about taking out Rhodes once we get some more naval power. Okay, well, mentioning naval power, um... Yeah, not huge amounts, but compared to before, reasonably good. Okay, you, you're going to come off the German, so max that up. No, we're not going to max these guys up, but we are going to incrementally improve them, because I want to get... do that next turn. I just want to have a bit of reserves of MPP for Austria. Now, okay, let's go back to research for Turkey. Okay, they are doing infantry warfare and infantry weapons. Aerial trench warfare, good, good. Mobility production technology, good. Um... Every weapons, naval weaponry. Hmm. Well, we might as well do that and uh, I don't know that anti submarine warfare is going to be much of a thing for them. Increases bill limit for transports. Yeah, with possible invasions, I think we want to do that as well. And let's also look over. Yeah, we are doing that. Okay, for Germany. We're doing armored warfare, tank development, fighter development. We're already in level two. We could do industrial technology since we're not getting a big bonus from the east um yeah aircraft would be more efficient We might as well get these going now. Okay, long range aircraft. <sighs> Close. Okay, so that is our turn. And that's going to be the end of this episode. Come back next time to see. Watch Greece surrender, I presume. Then we'll give um, half of Greece back. And no, we'll give all of Greece back and half of Serbia back. And um, Albania will become a superpower. Um, because Greece surrenders. Yes, I, uh, that's my expectations. Come back and see if that is the outcome in the next episode. Thanks everyone so much. See you next time for more historical gaming. And